Okay, eight-year-old is at school, one-year-old is in daycare. She forgot a beanie, but that's okay. But we made it. Yes, we're here for this video shoot of a very special SUV. Look, it's not just special because this is the Land Rover Range Rover autobiography. It's a special SUV because this is the long wheelbase. This is the twin turbo V8. And this is the car that I have been living with with my family for the past week. I'm gonna tell you all about it. Now, it's not everybody's cup of tea, this SUV. And in a lot of ways, that's a good thing. I'll tell you why and a whole lot more in this review. Now, if you wanna read the full written review, go to carsguide.com.au. Right, what are you going to do about that? Land Rover were making SUVs before people even called them SUVs. And though this is the fifth generation Range Rover and it's dripping with modern styling like those pencil thin tail lights, it's unmistakably a Range Rover. There's the tall windows, the short squared bonnet, the flat roofline, that familiar traditional shape. This is the long wheelbase, so we're talking 5.3 metres end to end. That's 200 millimetres longer than the standard wheelbase. Just look at those stretched rear doors. This is a go anywhere limousine, or in my case, a go anywhere daycare centre. I'm really sorry to interrupt. I have to point out something I, I just can't stand from a design perspective. And that's the door handles. Look, they look fantastic when the car is locked and they're sitting flush against the door. But when it's unlocked, they stick out like that. They look like Tupperware container handles. Not good at all. Also, from a practicality perspective, and we will get to practicality soon, they take ages to unfold themselves. You just sit there watching them doing that uh, thing. Now, I mentioned earlier that this SUV wasn't for everybody, that it wasn't everybody's cup of tea. What I mean by that is that it's more restrained than a lot of its rivals, say a Mercedes-Benz. It's more civilised, it's, it's more British. In fact, the British royal family absolutely love Range Rover. Land Rover is a brand actually. And in fact, the long wheelbase is their preferred mode of transport when they're getting around. The Queen used to love having mascots on her bonnet. She had a Labrador on one of her Range Rovers. And I really think that this is, this is missing a mascot. Now this car is just full of kids' toys, but I'm gonna find something in here which will be, no, what's that? Not that. A frog? Maybe, no. Perfect, 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 perfect. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Inside, the traditional Range Rover design awaits you with that flat dashboard, the low window sills, but there are modern touches like the displays and the fully digital dials. It's sumptuous, luxurious, but not over the top. Again, some people are looking for bling and gimmicks, but you won't find it here. And I like that. This interior feels solid, substantial. Now, another reason why this might not be everybody's cup of tea is that it's not as blingy inside as some of the rivals. It's actually very traditional Range Rover. You've got these long, flat surfaces in the dashboard. You've got this beautiful wood finish here. And that's, that's not part of it. Um, but one of the things I'm not really happy about is the way this screen just sort of sits here, like it's an aftermarket add-on. I think it would have looked far better if Range Rover had a worked out a way to incorporate it into the dash, actually build it in. Still, at the same time, it's really easy to use and it does feel very high-end, a lot with, along with all these other dials and switches as well. Very nice. So how much does all this cost? Well, more than something wearing a BMW badge, more than something wearing a Benz badge, less than something like a Bentley, and definitely less than an Aston Martin as well. But I can tell you, this Range Rover autobiography is better than an Aston Martin DBX. It's better than a Bentley Bentayga. I've driven both of those SUVs in the past and this is better in build quality, it's better in design, it's better in pretty much every way. 
That's right, even at $320,000 with all its options, the Range Rover Autobiography Long Wheelbase is very reasonable in value and price. Let me show you what you get. This is the autobiography grade, so it sits very high in the Range Rover lineup, and that means lots of standard features. This includes those retractable door handles with a proximity key, there's LED headlights and tail lights, and a power tailgate. Inside these caraway perforated semi aniline leather seats are standard too, and so is that 13.1 inch screen with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and SatNav. There's a fully digital driver display, a head-up display, wireless phone charging, and a Meridian sound system. Four-zone climate control is standard too and will keep the kids comfortable in the back, while the electronic sunshades will protect them from that giant fireball in the sky. Up front there are heated and cooled seats, which also massage. And in the second row, the window seats are heated as well, and power adjustable. Our autobiography is a seven-seater, and it's only about $1,600 more than the five-seat version. Ours had a few options fitted as well. There are the 23-inch wheels. The standard alloy is a 22-inch. There's also the black contrasting roof and the privacy glass, which is so dark, it's almost impossible to see in. That is a 4.4-litre twin-turbo V8 petrol engine and it's exactly the engine that a Range Rover should have. That's right, you can also get a six-cylinder diesel or a hybrid, but don't. You've come this far, don't get the six-cylinder, get the V8. It's also known as a P530, it's a petrol with about 530 horsepower, and it's magnificent. Brake towing capacity, 3.5 tonnes. If you're towing anything more than that, then what are you towing? Uh, Weighting depth, 900 millimetres, round a bit up to there, pretty darn good. Four-wheel drive, low-range gear. This is a go-anywhere amazing car. Zero to 100 in 4.7 seconds. What? It's one of the fastest block of flats I've ever piloted. Actually, we should go for a drive. Let's do it. All right, let's go for a drive. Now, the Range Rover Autobiography is an incredibly capable four-wheel drive. Off-road, this thing is very, very, very handy, but we are not giving it an off-road test today. We are testing it firmly on the bitumen where it will probably spend most of its time when it's with you. So even though you've got that amazing off-road capability and you've also got that incredible towing capability, a brake towing capacity of 3.5 tonnes. No, the thing I love about the Range Rover Autobiography V8 is the performance. Whoa, you put your foot down. And the whole bonnet goes up. Well, the bonnet doesn't pop up, but the whole front of the car lifts up like a speedboat. It's just so addictive. Listen to that. Now, the V8 is definitely there. It's got a fantastic V8 rumble, but it's not over the top. It's not brash. It's not antisocial, but it sounds magnificent, especially when you get into it a bit. Now, one of the magical things about this SUV is how it's so comfortable, yet handling is just so good as well. It's incredibly smooth to drive, but you get a corner, and somehow, it just goes through it perfectly. Unbelievable. And the whole time, everything just feels so smooth, so comfortable, and so easy. Absolutely incredible. Oh my God, it is like a sports car, only enormous. Oh, oh my goodness, that is, don't get the six cylinder, you've got to get this eight. Oh my God, it just goes. Now piloting it around town, as I said, we did the school drop offs every day in this, we did the supermarket shopping, car park, torture in it, with everything, you know, after school sport, you name it. It's actually really easy to, to navigate, pilot, handle small streets, parking. Now this thing is pretty much 5.3 metres long. That's, that's bigger than most SUVs, yet it's a lot easier than smaller SUVs to park. And that's because the windows are big, the visibility is great, the steering is really light, the cameras are good, the visibility you can see where the bonnet ends is great and where the tail starts, 
It's just so easy, too easy, too easy, mate. Okay, so how much petrol are you gonna to have to feed this beast? The answer is pretty simple, it's a lot. Uh, according to the spec sheet, this thing uses 11.8 litres per 100 kilometres of petrol. Now, if the manufacturer is saying that it's almost using 12 litres per 100 k's, after a combination of urban and open roads, then it's going to use a lot of petrol. Now, the figure that you can see on your screen right now is what we measured after living with it, with our family, for a week. That's a lot of petrol. The Range Rover was given the maximum five-star ANCAP rating when it was tested in 2022. Standard safety tech includes AEB, blind spot warning, there's lane keeping assistance and rear cross traffic alert. For child seats, there are ice fix mounts in the second row, while there are top tether anchor points in the second and third rows. Importantly, there are head covering curtain airbags for both the second and third rows. The Range Rover autobiography already really is a super practical SUV. The long wheelbase gives you even more space inside, especially in the second row. Let me show you, actually check out how much room you've got here. Look at the size of that doorway. It's like the entrance to a supermarket. It's massive. I'm, I'm sorry about the mess. I literally have dropped the kids off at school. I haven't had a, much of a moment to get it clean, uh, but check out this. Check out this, oh, ouch, uh, this legroom here. I mean, I'm 191 centimeters tall, uh, taller than most kids, and th that's ridiculous room. And that gives people in the front plenty of room as well. There's great cabin storage as well with giant door pockets. Look at those, they're massive in the front and in the back. You've got dual zone climate control in the back here as well. You've got basically four zone climate. Um, it's, it's such a spacious, spacious environment. One thing though, although the flat floor is great, especially if you don't have like a transmission hump here, it does mean that this space to the ceiling is quite, quite narrow, if you know what I mean. So putting my one-year-old in and out of her car seat hasn't been as easy as say something with a lower floor and a higher roof. Still, incredibly spacious. I have to point out though, that these doors are so enormous that my eight-year-old son cannot close the door himself. Now, he's a pretty strong little Viking child himself, but at the same time, that is such a big door. Trying to reach out there and pull that for an eight-year-old is, is hard. So maybe the long wheelbase isn't the family-friendly version you might think it would be, even though it does give you all that space there. Hmm, let me show you the third row. So with that seat forward, you've got a pretty large aperture to get into the third row. The car's also pretty low right now. It's on the access setting. So this car has air suspension and it's got several ride heights. So you've got an off-road setting. In fact, you've got two off-road heights. You've got a normal road height and then you've got an access height. It's kind of like an elephant getting down on its knees so you can slide off it. That makes it easier to get in. Although I am tall, so getting in and out of any car is not easy for me. There we go. And if I sit behind this seat here, look, there's not a lot of room here in the back. These really are occasional seats, uh, taking an extra pair of kids home after soccer practice, that type of thing. But yeah, in the back here, you've got cup holders, just like in the front as well. Plenty of other amenities like air vents too. And these tinted windows in the back are also good for keeping the sun off your kids' faces. Let me show you the boot. Now boot space is enormous. There's even good space when the third row is actually in the, the upright position. We can fit the, the medium-sized Cars Guide bag in there. Now to put them down, this is really cool. It's all electronic. You don't have to do anything with your hands. Well, you do, you've got to press buttons with your hands, but you press these and magically, all the seats readjust themselves and the third row folds flat to give you one of the biggest boot spaces I've ever seen. A thing I really, really love is this little fold down section of the tailgate, which provides a handy little seat. You can sit here and, and drink your cup of tea. Now, in terms of warranty, the Range Rover Autobiography Long Wheelbase is covered by a five year unlimited kilometer warranty. There's also five years roadside assistance and a five year service plan as well. 
So there you have it, the Range Rover autobiography with the long wheelbase and the V8 petrol engine. It does performance, it does luxury and it does practicality all at a really reasonable price as well. Do you need the long wheelbase? Or well, look, keep in mind the long wheelbase does make those rear doors extra long and extra heavy and it is difficult for kids to shut them. But still, this is the ultimate prestige family SUV.